Hey, you guys ever been in the White House? No. We were looking forward to a tour. Uh, well, that's my office over there, and the president works in that brown room over there, and nobody else really matters. Come on in. Uh, you are rolling? Yeah. Okay. We're ready? We're ready? Great. I'm, I'm here just to introduce John Hutman, who's going to take you on a tour. He doesn't know this yet, <laughs> of the set that he created for us. So, John, start the tour. So here we are in the lobby of the West Wing. If you turn around, you could see the ghost of John Kennedy because that's what the lobby looked like when he was president. Exactly. This, the lobby, like so much of America, has been chopped into offices to accommodate the growing staff of the president. But for kind of theatrical purposes, we thought it would be a good idea to take it back to what it once was. So there is, this, there is absolutely a historical basis for this lobby. In the Kennedy era, they took this hallway out and the wall came to here. And then in the Nixon administration, th and this is true, this is not a joke, this is not a lefty joke, the, the wall came to here and so this is what you would have for the lobby of the current West Wing. Even if it had never been this big, John would have designed it this big. And, and I mean that because uh, not only out of his design eye, but also out of what we wanted the lobby to represent on our show. There needs to be grandeur when you first come into this place. The real West Wing now, that doesn't exist. We needed that no matter what for our show, for our audience to feel the entrance and the grandness of this lobby. If you go to the real West Wing, it's very, you know, the Oval Office is very impressive and everything else looks exactly the same. It's right. a lot of white right. walls and blue carpets. This room was about grandeur and the kind of grandeur that you see in the Oval Office. Right. The mural room has that kind of grandeur, the Roosevelt room, but we really wanted to show kind of the upstairs downstairs right. quality that is actually part of the working west wing and so this side which is the bullpen which is, we can go in which we can go in now is meant to be you know it, kind of a, an interpretation of the reality of most of the working white house which is you know a bad office with too many people in too little space if you go downstairs in the West Wing, yeah. it is very similar to this. And the idea of fluorescence, that's all John's work. I mean, we were sort of saying it, they should be different environments. You were like, let's make it fluorescent. This is still a little bit more spacious. And I should say, as we go, you will see, you know, the, a lot of the design of the show, a lot of the layout, a lot of the modifications that we did to the real kind of historically accurate West Wing had to do with the way that you wanted to shoot the show right. and the, that style of scenes which move from place to place and characters who cross and interact. My experience is in designing features and the thing about a feature is you read the script and you know exactly what you're going to need and so like we need this room and we don't right. need this room and part of the challenge of this was trying to imagine with you and with Aaron where the show was going to go, where the stories were going to go, what other characters we might want to see, what were the different kind of arenas for staging. When we first had the show, and you can kind of... You know, well, we can go down this way. Of, yeah. yeah. Uh, and we first were designing it, we did not have this stage that you're on. We had two stages. We had two stages across the lot, and they were two smaller stages, so we had to build two sets, basically. And what John came up with, the design, and then he'll get, is that this particular hallway, if you turn around uh, and look down this hallway, this hallway was duplicated identical on both sets. So as we came into this hallway and went into the next part of the, you know, the wing of this west wing, you'll see that that was a completely different stage. So as these doors would open, which is why they're also not glass, and those are, these doors would open, this was a wall. Exactly. And it was designed wide enough for extras, basically, to hide in this thing like this. Little, you know, POWs, basically, that were But you have to move back here. here, move back here. And then you'll see, if you, if, if you come back here and turn around, Tommy will demonstrate exactly what you could do in and the, you'll see the, a thousand these times. These were the, in the crosses. In the, and in constantly the, people who were going into a room this size, you know? Exactly. Um, so this is, this is the big cheat of the first season. Anything that's in the lobby and the bullpen is on one stage with a gold corridor. And anything that's in the Oval Office, Roosevelt Room, Leo's office, or anywhere in the communications bullpen is on the other stage. And both stages have a gold corridor. All right. Shut the hell up, everybody. I fired more people than you before breakfast. The Roosevelt Room, this is essentially where the Roosevelt Room sits in the West Wing. And Tommy said, 
can't we have French doors? And I kind of looked at him and I said, French doors in the White House. So the more that it could feel like during these very private meetings, out there in the communications bullpen or out here in this hallway, life was still going on and people were still doing other jobs. And it took me a while to kind of justify that architecturally, but I think in the end it really does feel like the center right. of, the, of the world. And the columns with Tom Del Ruth lights on the back of them is kind of, I, I feel like is, is kind of a signature piece of the I, I think without a doubt. And it's not only that, people who have come from the, the real West Wing and seen this have gone, gosh, if only our Roosevelt room felt like this. It just feels so much larger twice as big. because none of these doors exist there. There's a solid door there, a solid door there, and a solid door there, and you're in a box, basically. Okay, so now we're going to head into the mural room, which is in the place where in the real West Wing you would find the cabinet room. I think we thought after kind of working out the Roosevelt room that having a second conference room across the hall would be somewhat redundant. redundant. It was then your idea to sort of come up with bringing the East Room and the East Wing of the White House to the West Wing. This is actually a dining room, <laughs> was the family dining room in the American President that we so, you know sort of uh, cobbled bits and pieces from. And we thought, well, that would be a nice formal room. And I think it's a nice and, formal uh, room. Not only is it an American president, it's actually in the, the White, White House. House. Absolutely. You know, I mean, so it's, it's, it's a copy this, of this, yes. the, the uh, yes, indeed. Got it. I got it. I got it. This is uh, actually where, in the West Wing, the press secretary's office is sort of in this relationship right. to the Oval Office and the Cabinet Room. We made this the communications office just to really accommodate Toby and right. his his the speech writing staff in some ways is was sort of you know situated in here. This is the working White House. This is behind the scenes, and of course it flows nicely. You uh, want to lead us like through yeah. Leo's? So and let's end go up? this way. Okay, back through the yellow hallway, which uh -huh. would have been a another stage. And once again, it's the color palette, it's the lighting of each one of these rooms is significantly different and yet somehow integrated all together. As well as, as you will notice, and that's why you can do this with a Steadicam, there are so many doors. It was like there was never enough doors for me that you could kind of go this way, you can go this way, you can come this way, you can go that way, you can go anywhere that we could sort of put a door. I figured out a way and John created it for us to stage something through those doors. Leo's office. Margaret! Where's Josh? He's on his way. It's so funny because every, <laughs> every time I come in here, there's a new beam, there's new portals up there. I mean, the, the set has sort of taken on a, a lighting life. life of its own. Yes. Do you know, where you find out where things end up getting staged. Uh -huh. But it was pretty, it was laid out like this. Uh -huh. You know, it was not, yeah. let's change no, it, let's no, do anything. No. We tried to figure out where the furniture would go in here and lived in the pilot. And you look at the pilot and you look at episode 88 and 80% 80 of it is exactly the same. And that's mm -hmm. pretty extraordinary that's in a set as big as this set was. Yeah. I mean, the one thing that we never figured out and we mm -hmm. ended up never using was that particular door right there mm -hmm. exists in the real you know, chief, uh, of chief of staff's office. office. Here, I'll open it's it. It's now, I think, it's still probably a prop place or storage. May I use the bathroom? Yes. Thank you. Ainsley. Hey. Good evening, Mr. President. Is she here? Ainsley Hayes? Yeah. Yes, sir. Where is she? Well, she's in the closet, Mr. President. Why? She thought it was a bathroom. And the reason it was, it was a secure phone. It was a tiny little closet. We went into his office. When with we, a when refrigerator, we took a tour. just like this. Yeah, a tiny little office with a little refrigerator and a, a telephone. And it was a place that he could go while he was having meetings to have a secure phone call. And we thought, what a great idea. We have yet to use it as that. <laughs> so it's a closet over there. OK, after you. Yes. Last but certainly not least. The Oval Office. The Oval Office. Uh, which actually you should talk about, the sort of creation of it and where you... you well, know. this is, you know, I talked about 
before uh, in, w when I was just kind of describing the set that we we salvage bits and pieces from the American president set, although I think we intended to salvage a lot more than we actually used. But this room and the mural room are really the two rooms that we used intact, right. although we moved the, the mural room. And when we, I told the story that when we originally got this, I don't know if you even know this, because this is the room that was reused and reused and reused. The top three feet had been cut off, the entire cornice yes. had been cut off with a chainsaw. So this has been uh, moved and put back together a number of times. But uh, this is an actual, very close to exact scale replica of the Oval Office. Now, it is traditional that each president redecorates specifically the Oval Office. I mean, other parts of the White House as well. And this is, I would, I, I think that we went very close to the Clintonian White it's House very much. And, it is. And, and have stayed. And we were also, you know, they were very generous to us to allow us to come in and to sort of a, to look at the Oval Office before we even started. The things that John did that really helps us too, and they're small things, but for instance, these two doors that are over there. They're doors without any molding, which even in American president, they're without any moldings. That's the way it's really done because it's supposed to be somewhat invisible doors. Well, it's also graphically not near as interesting. This is a reproduction of John F. Kennedy's desk. Right. In the real desk, this is a trap door and there's a very famous picture of John Kennedy Jr peeking out the trapdoor under the The kids the used desk. to crawl under there. And, you know, each person has a different story. It's very interesting. This was sort of apparently built for Reagan to sort of cover this up um, because he used to scratch his feet. Then somebody else said it was already there because Roosevelt used to have it so people wouldn't see his paralysis. Um, and then there was something about Nixon taking his shoes. You know, all we know is it comes off and small children can run under there. If anybody's out there, I'm signing off. Have a good night. We're on the lawn of the White House. <laughs> if, we, if we were really here, we would see the, now I always get disoriented. The, the Rose, Rose Garden. Rose, the Rose Garden's Garden. there, the mansion's there. So this is the portico which, by that the leads way, to the mansion. The translites that we now have, which are the real translite. You can see the mansion in the corner, and from uh -huh. angles, it, when it's lit at night especially, it looks like the mansion is living right there. You know, it's quite beautiful. So through this wall is where the mansion would be, and that way, over the trees, you see the Washington Monument. And the thing that John Huttman always does for us is these can move anywhere we want. This is normally much longer, but this plays as the entrance to the mansion where the residence is. This would be, at one time, was the White House swimming pool and is now where the press briefing room is. Right. Which is not accessible from this side, but only it, from the front. From the press briefing room goes this way. That is the one piece of geography we've completely reversed. Our press briefing room is in a whole other area. On the other than, side. Of on the, the other room. side, and then trying to match this to be the press briefing. This all just should feel like mansion, and sort of going up the stairs. And that's the end. That is the end. Turn back and look. Say goodbye to the West Wing. Now, here's what I want you to do. Okay. Follow us out. Let's go. Come on. This is the speed we walk. <laughs> Through here. You go that way. You go that way. Keep looking at us. Keep going. Through here. You'll meet us. Go into the Roosevelt Room. Whoop. There you go. Right yep. ah, come on. Come on. You can do it. Next time I got it. All right. We're going no. here. You go that way. You go way. this way. Oh. <laughs> Uh, That's all pick, right. Pick walk us up through here. the people. Follow oh, us. you pick somebody else up. Go with them. <laughs> Follow this us is the out nature here. of the show. Come on. Keep going. Never mind the gear. Double doors always swing both ways. Keep going. You talk We're about. going. We'll see you. You're out. You're done. Thank you. <laughs>